thinking about public engagement of students in natural resource protection. So uh, we have Jennifer Jones with Florida Gulf Coast University. Jennifer, can you hear us? I can, I'm ready to go. Perfect, take it away. So thanks everybody for having me. And uh, I see we've got 105 people online. So well done to the conference organizers for putting this together. Uh, I'm here today to talk about a new project uh, FGCU is doing. I arrived last year as the director of the Center for Environmental and Sustainability Education. And when I arrived, uh, one of the first partners I reached out to was the school district of Lee County. And so today's presentation recognizes a a new partnership and a pilot program we're launching with uh, them to train teachers. And so on presenting today, this is certainly a joint effort on the title slide. You can see Dr. Molly Nation from FGCU is involved uh, and a number of folks from the school district, Lee Hughes, Susie Hassett, some folks probably know through environmental education, uh, Serge Thomas, a water quality professor at FGCU as well. So uh, next slide. So today I really want to not just talk about the, the pilot, but also just the research and program goals for this new partnership. A little about the, the values and ethics, if you will, that drove our approach for this partnership. And then finally, some of the, the lessons we've already learned from our initial pilot. Next slide. So we're calling this program, uh, sorry, back up. Oh, my mistake, please, next slide. Uh, so before I jump in, I want to say a few words. If you're not familiar with the center, it has been around uh, for a number of years. Uh, I'm new and I just happened to arrive at uh, the moment in time where the center is now part of the water school, which hopefully you guys have all heard about. Uh, so I work with uh, Greg Colley and, and the other institutes and centers you may be familiar with. We are indeed uh, this center that really focuses on environmental education, our priorities you can see in front of you, environmental know-how, you know, basically another way of saying environmental literacy creating access to nature, basically getting folks outside, engaged citizenry, all the work I think most of us all do is to get people to actually make change. And so some of the strategies we're using to inform this work already is, you know, really trying to see the hub, uh, sorry, see CEAS as a hub to connect you guys, you know, to connect our organizations, our, our community members, our partners, uh, to help people do this, this work. Uh, of course, we will do some original research and teaching part of that is what you're hearing about today, this, this partnership program. And just a reminder that, you know, as part of FGCU, which has such a strong focus on community engagement, you know, we really are here to uh, really focus on our five immediate counties here in Southwest Florida. But of course, while we work across the state and around, uh, around the country and world as our, our discipline field allows. So next slide. All right, so a little bit about the partnership values and principles uh, that drove this. I think it's really important to, to spend a minute on this because when we started this partnership, it really was a handful of us sitting in a room together, including Dr. Jeff Spiro, the Chief Academic Officer for Lee County Schools. And for us, um, really just trying to think big picture, what are some of the things we want to do? And so before we allowed ourselves to get too deep into the weeds of planning something, you know, some of the values we, we quickly settled on is that environmental education matters and that uh, schoolyard retention ponds that are already being used um, in some places were increasingly an unused resource that we needed to help teachers learn how to use. So we came up with the idea of exposing teachers to real world research. So what you're gonna hear from today is really putting teachers side by side in the field with a researcher who's doing their own research with teachers there that day. And that this professional development that teachers are getting should be part of the school day. So often when teachers get the opportunity to do environmental education, you know, it's on their own time, it's weekends, it's them paying out of their pocket. But uh, the leadership at Lee County Schools and, and us at FGCU agree this should be during the day. Teachers should get paid for it. They should get their, their subs covered. Um, and so it legitimizes it. And uh, the process of co-design, I mentioned that we, we really arrived at the model you're going to hear about today. And a big part of it is that we were not going to sort of um, force feed teachers the learning outcomes. We were gonna create a process that allowed the teachers to drive their own learning. So putting them in the field with a researcher doing real research, we all agreed the need to allow spontaneity in the field that day. Um, and then for the teachers to figure out what they just saw and witnessed and, and for them to figure out how to best take it back to their classroom. So next slide. All right, so the actual academy, we're calling the Watershed Teacher Leadership Academy, Wetland for short. We've got Dr. Molly Nation there. 
who uh, really is the uh, environmental education researcher driving it in the field. So I want to acknowledge her work. So the, the ultimate goals of the program, creating a community of practice, basically, you know, trying to get all of us working together on environmental education, in this case, K-12 teachers and university researchers. When we talk about teachers, focusing on that increased confidence and skills to do outside learning is huge. And give teachers all the information they want, but if they don't have the confidence to go outside and use it, they won't. You know, we got some big picture goals that we're really trying to do with this partnership is we want to help change standards based learning in, in Lee County. You know that um, standards are the reality, but we want uh, to help teachers use their own schoolyards to achieve those standards and not be using workbooks that were designed out of state. And ultimately, like so many of us here, you know, changing water quality in Southwest Florida is a, is a big outcome for this partnership. Next slide. So the pilot we just finished this spring. Uh, it's a, a small pilot that we started. We had five teachers. It worked out really well. We actually had five teachers from five grades across five different schools. So ultimately, we created that cohort. You can see the teachers represented a number of different disciplines. Within the CPOMS standards, because I mentioned this had to be a, a link to standards, uh, through that process of co-design and consultation with the Lee County School District, we settled on a specific group of standards that all fall broadly under the nature and practice of science. Just pretty much like it sounds, and believe it or not, it's a set of standards that teachers uh, famously struggle with in the, the real world. As I mentioned, the schoolyard retention ponds uh, became part of it. And in this instance you're going to hear about today, we looped in Dr. Serge Thomas as our FGC researcher focused on water quality in the future when we do this program. Again, we'll certainly bring in other researchers. So next slide. All right, very quickly, I'm just going to go through the field. The main thing to take away from this is that this is not a once off day in the field. What we really try to do is create an iterative and reflective process for teachers to engage. So basically they go out in the field with the, the researchers for a day. They, after that day, they go home and reflect about what did they see? How does it relate to their own classroom, their, their own teaching standards? They then have to design a lesson plan based on what they learned that day and how they might take it into their own schoolyard, their own retention pond. Uh, we ended up getting uh, the, the teacher and, uh, sorry, the group of teachers and the researchers that all meet at one specific schoolyard retention pond and they did some peer feedback um, on the lesson plans, creating that, that community of learners or that, that cohort has proven invaluable. Uh, and then ultimately the goal is basically after the teachers have done that three phase process, you know, first time, first day out in the field learning with, with the researcher. A few weeks go by, do some reflection, write your lesson plan, then have everybody meet in the schoolyard, pilot your lessons, and then after that, hopefully, you're implementing your schoolyard, and, and ultimately, we would love to grow this program where what I just described would be one module, and perhaps over the course of a year, a teacher might go through two or three modules, each module being led or facilitated with a different FGCU researcher. Next slide. All right, so preliminary analysis in terms of what we saw with this pilot. So again, this pilot went through all three phases that I've just described, uh, including the, the, the research day with the FGC researcher. Uh, a, a little bit about the data I'm gonna talk about today. It comes from the, the researcher observation. Again, it includes Dr. Molly Nation, who's a professor of environmental education. Uh, we provided teachers opportunity to give re reflection and feedback and then uh, we had a focus group professionally facilitated with um, one of the board members, if anybody knows Dave Chase, who's a board member for the North American Association for Environmental Education, certainly the big uh, uh, main professional body for environment for environmental education across the country. And um, you know what we've learned some some things here, not a surprise at all. You know that the teachers have found this professional development, especially about water quality, very relevant and timely. There's just no doubt about that. And um, so uh, tick that box and move very quickly uh, forward. Uh, the next thing there is that cohort model. Uh, you know, teachers are starving to learn with and from their peers. And so we actually heard great feedback of how they appreciated learning across grades and across schools. While it may not make sense, or at first you may not think it makes sense to put an elementary school teacher together with a high school teacher you know as a as a supportive learning community they really liked it and and that was probably one of the strongest things we heard 
from those folks is that they they um, really begged us to make sure that we in, uh, include that part moving forward. Um, you know, by the teachers going through that multi-stage process of being out in the field with the researcher and doing legit research and then going home and practicing it in their own retention ponds and getting peer feedback, they said they did feel uh, increased confidence and they fully expected uh, that they would begin to use some of these new skills uh, in, in their classrooms and schoolyards. That last bullet, you know, FGCU faculty uh, research, you know, so that was one of the, the unstated outcomes I didn't mention earlier, but, you know, FGCU's got skin in this game too, because we not only want to work with and partner with teachers, but uh, we want to be able to provide uh, an opportunity for FGCU researchers to share their work, you know, with the community. And so that's proven to be very effective in this pilot as well. Next slide. Few other things that worked here. Um, the, the teachers explained the firsthand observation of authentic scientific research uh, really helped. So again, that's that nature's and practice of science, one of the standards. What they did with Search Thomas that day is they actually got out in the canoe, in the pond, in the water. They actually took water quality samples using an array of instruments. They took it back to the lab. They said that really mattered, not just being taught how to use uh, instruments and things, but doing the research themselves made a huge difference. In this case, Search Thomas, again, if folks know, he's a gifted teacher and educator, so that really worked. Um, and then having Molly Nation there as an environmental education uh, professor really helped create dialogue between that researcher and the teacher. So bringing all those three groups together was a, was a big uh, plus. Next slide. Few more things I already mentioned there, that collaboration across grades and schools really mattered. Providing this as a working day experience with you know, substitute teachers so that these teachers can take this like professional development. Uh, providing that gap time between the days in the field and the time to reflect and write lessons back at your own schoolyard uh, really help teachers assimilate learning. And that's where this becomes a, you know, a semester or a year long experience and not just a weekend workshop. And that really seems to matter for teacher learning. Next slide, please. A few things we need to change or improve in the future we know is that need to create shared expectations around what, again, what we call a community of practice. So, you know, we brought these folks together who had never met and in a little bit of an unusual circumstance. We weren't just talking at them, we were basically having them go out and do a day that had not been necessarily planned. The day was unknown how it would go, and what data they would be collecting and, and what that would look like. So um, I think setting expectations so that everybody knows what's coming, what the experience is gonna look like and then what their roles and responsibilities are in it. Everybody certainly showed up very enthusiastically and everything turned out great. But I think when you do, do a training and, and do a partnership that looks a little different than what people have experienced in the past, it's worth taking a moment to reflect beforehand how it's gonna look different. Next slide. Uh, the other big thing we heard is, is really, is just a greater need for resources that reflect uh, uh, environmental education for the local district. That we start creating place-based resources for Southwest Florida that they are aligned to the local curriculum map of standards that teachers use and uh, that peer mentors be used to engage teachers in using their outdoor classrooms. Next slide. So I mentioned what comes next is this was a, a spring pilot. We've got a, a wonderful partnership in place with Lee County School District. If all goes well, we'll launch this in the fall. We'll enroll a much larger cohort. We, Teachers would love to keep it small, 510. We may actually end up probably rolling closer to 20. We're looking at a full year experience that might include three modules. You know, as a research element, we need to figure out what's the right dosage for this. Um, you know, you can't ask all those professors and all those people to give all that time and all those resources uh, if it's unneeded. So figuring out what's just the right amount and the right amount of people to have where and when, how much time to spend with the teachers, I think, is something we'll measure for a number of years to come. And then hopefully, you know, make this a more efficient program so that can be sustained in the future. Next slide. And that does it. I wanted, I do really want to thank, um, you know, we went into this partnership with Lee County, all agreeing to have skin in the game. Everybody put in time and talent and treasure. Thanks to everybody that really did chip in uh, financially and a shout out to Vulcan Materials Company locally 
who made a gift uh, that makes it possible for us to cover teacher stipends as part of this project. So with that, I am done and we'll take questions. Oh my goodness, okay. I'm just well, gonna thank you very much. We, we already have a bunch of questions for you, so feel free to start I'm answering as many as you can. Them. Okay, and uh, you'll tell me when to stop. Do these lesson plans and see, appear in CPOM's website? So they do not. You know, right now these are really draft lesson plans that the teachers are creating really as just part of their own learning process. But I'm gonna make a note, I think that's a fabulous idea that as we figure this out and get it to a little more formalized state, we absolutely should be creating lesson plans that come, uh, that we can share. And we have talked about in the future involving FGCU students who would also be able to uh, help um, do the nitty gritty work to formalize those lesson plans to get them to a stage where they could be shared online. The next question in red, any ideas for working with more teachers? It is sometimes difficult for non-traditional educators to connect with school different uh, districts to offer programs or resources. So great question there, because what I see with you saying is that community of practice, you know, how do we connect K-12 teachers to professors, to non-formal, and for folks that don't know, non-traditional educators, basically those folks outside the classroom and our, our local nature centers and whatnot. So, um, that person and all those people that have an interest, there's not time here, please reach out to me. That kind of thing is exactly what I'm talking about the center wants to help do. We're busy creating what I'm calling an exchange to bring folks together several times a year just to keep up our, our contacts. Of course, we work with the Conservancy at Southwest Florida, Heather Scaza Acosta, for those people that know her. Uh, we'll actually be hosting the Environmental Education Alliance of Southwest Florida Conference, probably at FGCU this fall. So I think increasing those contacts is a, is a huge part of what we want to do moving forward. Uh, any thoughts about adapting this program for the upcoming year, potential virtual learning? Uh, no. <laughs> um, I will say if you go to the website, uh, Center for Environmental Studies, uh, Environmental and uh, Sustainability Education at FGCU, you will find a link to a special program that myself and the center created this spring in consultation with Lee County School Districts. We created a Google Sheet that has over 150 virtual uh, standards-based lessons on it. So for anybody that needs virtual experiences but must be attached to standards, please go consult that. Um, I had a lot of great contact. Hopefully we'll revisit that this fall. Well, I hope we don't revisit that this fall, meaning I hope we don't need to have it, but uh, if we do, we will. Yellow question box there, a number of different orgs offering EE resources for teachers. What are good ways to connect and match EEs to standards, especially when teachers have limited capacity to search for their own? So, so one good thing you can do right away is, is certainly attend the, the conference I mentioned that happens every October, this coming October at FGCU. Uh, join LEAF, L-E-E-F, the League for Environmental Educators of Florida, and I mentioned the NAAEE. Those provide some links and already standards-based material. But you hit on a great point, you know, there is a lack of quality standards based EE at the local level, right, you can find lots of good stuff, but it may have absolutely nothing to do with Florida, or Lee County, or Charlotte, or wherever folks might be. So, uh, again, if you need some direct contacts and information, uh, please reach out to me again, I'm Jennifer Jones at FGCU. Um, is busing or other constraints keeping kids from getting outdoor environmental education? You know, I would say yes to no. Prior to coming to FGCU, if anybody's looking at me on the screen, I was at a place called Great Smoky Mountains Institute at Tremont. I was the CEO, very large residential non-formal education center located inside the National Park. And we brought in schools, uh, thousands of kids every year from across 50 states and countries, and they all came on buses. That was one form of environmental education where those kids spent multiple days and a lot of dollars to do that work. However, a big part of that work that we were doing is the teachers that were there with those students was trying to train those teachers how to use their own schoolyards as, as nature. And I, I truly believe that we can give every teacher a $10 million science lab. You already have it, it's your schoolyard, it's your parking lot. If you can go outside, you can do environmental education. You don't need a big sexy national park. The most important thing you need is a teacher with confidence who's willing to open that door and take those kids outside and let those kids start asking a bunch of questions that the teacher may not know <laughs> the answers to. And that's a big part of environmental education is really you know, encouraging that I notice, I wonder, and not every question is gonna get asked that day. I have less than a minute left. I see uh, a lot more questions. Um, 
is your curriculum available online? This curriculum is not, like I said, it's just a pilot. A lot of municipalities do outreach stormwater. This would help with stormwater. Yes, stormwater pond ideas. And that's a big reason we chose Serge Thomas as our initial researcher to connect with the teachers because he does stormwater ponds and it's deep. It is an undertapped resource of network classroom. I think with the cursor there, I'm probably getting the wave off that my time is up. Uh,